On the night before Thanksgiving, November 24th, 1971, a well-dressed, mild-mannered gentleman entered the Portland airport and bought a ticket to Seattle. Here's your ticket, Mr. Cooper. He gave his name at the desk as Dan Cooper. In a matter of hours, this man would become the most infamous skyjacker of all time. Moments after boarding, Mr. Cooper ordered a drink. When the flight attendant arrived, he attempted to pass her a note. Under the impression she was being hit on, don't get fresh, the note was ignored. Cooper then leaned forward and advised, Miss, you better read that note. I have a bomb. Unconvinced, ah oh, fooey, the attendant asked to see this supposed bomb. Cooper obliged, revealing what looked to be multiple sticks of dynamite within his bag. Cooper then began politely issuing his demands. $200,000 in American currency, four parachutes, and a refueling truck waiting in Seattle upon arrival. The attendant rushed to the cockpit to notify the pilots. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The plane circled over Seattle as the authorities quickly tried to collect all of Cooper's demands. Does anyone know where we can get parachutes? After the items were collected, the plane landed. Cooper allowed the oblivious passengers to disembark. Great plane ride. Yeah, no issues at all. Cooper remained on board, probably drinking, because it was the 70s, and that's just what he did all the time back then. <sighs> the items were loaded onto the plane, and the aircraft took off, with only Cooper, the pilots, and a single flight attendant on board. Cooper requested the plane fly towards Mexico City, but it's pretty clear he never intended to get there. Over a remote patch of Washington State, the ever so polite Cooper gently asked the flight attendant to travel to the cockpit. At 8.13 p.m., the pilots noticed the tail of the plane pitch upward. This is when they believe Cooper jumped from the aircraft and into the dark, cold night. In the papers when they reported the skyjacking, the journalists mistakenly referred to Dan Cooper as D.B. Cooper. Why? Probably because they were drunk. Again, it was the 70s. <sighs> Regardless of what you call him, Cooper was never found. He either plummeted to his death, I didn't think this through enough, died in the wilderness, or got away scot-free. Now, that's what I call a mystery. Research more into the mystery and post your opinions in the comment section below. Join the club. Subscribe to Mystery Club.